Hey, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, sorry for the uh, little delay. Um, good morning. Is everybody there? I see 10 people, right? I see. Uh, do you hear me? Uh, or maybe my, my oh, my audio you is. Are, like, yeah. yeah, we can hear you fine. Yeah, we can hear you. Is, is everybody, uh, can everybody hear me? Yeah. Yes. Can you hear us? Hello. We can hear you. Yeah, we're here. Oh, oh look, what's going on? <laughs> Something's, uh, okay. All righty. Uh, now the, uh, uh, somehow um, it got, uh, it got hooked up to Bluetooth, and uh, uh, can you hear me now? I mean, I, I, I couldn't I couldn't hear you because a while ago it was Bluetooth uh, headphone. I didn't turn it on. I used it for uh, the phone call. <laughs> uh, say something. We can hear you. Okay, can hear you? All right. Hi, Tyra. <laughs> uh, hi, I say, I said to. Yeah. Uh, somehow. Uh, my computer was connected to my Bluetooth headset, so <laughs> I couldn't hear you at all because I I took off my uh, headset. Now, <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry about that, you know, because there's a lot of confusion now. Uh, I mean, within the uh, college and uh, within the department about the uh, like, you know, uh, uh, how what what format it's going to be in the spring because there's a lot of you know um, uh, um, controversy about the CUNY policy you know um, about you know uh, um, uh, in person the ratio between in person class and you know uh, uh, online class and the CUNY policy is that uh, you know seventy percent. I mean, seventy percent of the uh, uh, all the courses must be in person, which was, you know, uh, which seems to be the latest guideline. But you know, uh, previously uh, from spring, you know, and then uh, previously it was like sixty percent, and uh, still, nothing, I know. Was, nothing is concrete. So it caused a lot of confusion uh, among uh, the faculty because you know we're. Um, uh, facing the winter uh, session as well. Uh, <clears throat> sorry about that. I mean, uh, you, you, uh, uh, you don't need to uh, uh, waste your time on the uh, internal uh, administrative stuff. Yeah, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, someone uh, did. Someone try to say something. I'm sorry. I, I was just talking only. All, all yeah, the time. I was. No, I was just gonna say for. I know for my GI Bill benefits, um, where uh -huh. they're mandating now for us to be in person at least one uh one day yeah 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 um yeah I, actually in in the uh in the fall fall uh 2021 um uh, what uh uh the hybrid courses required at least you know uh just one day uh face to face one day per semester. So that, that was like a uh, <clears throat> expedient because CUNY policy was 70%, but that policy came out too late. Uh, uh, fall semester has had already started and then that policy came out. So um, uh, as, a, uh, <clears throat> as a last minute you know, uh, uh, expedient, they came up with, you know, at least one day face to face per semester. So everyone, you know, selected like the last day of the class, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but the, um, uh, if the GI, if your GI bill says, you know, at least one day per semester or one day per week. What does it uh, exactly say? They're saying it's uh, one class has to be in person, so pretty much every class. Oh, no, no. It, it, uh, 
if you're taking, let's say, three classes, uh, four classes, I mean, to qualify as full time, you must, you know, be enrolled in four classes. And uh, if it says, you know, at least one class, then that means, you know, uh, three classes can be uh, online or. Right. Uh, and that's that's what I plan on doing. Uh, just uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, if, if that's that's the, uh, you know, um, oh, of course, you know, uh, that's, you know, um, uh, GI Bill, so that would uh, um, uh, that would fall under what uh, veterans uh, VA Veterans Administration or uh, Veterans Affairs. <clears throat> uh, but if if that is the guideline, then you know uh, maybe you know uh, um, CUNY doesn't have to insist you know like seventy percent in person, you know? and also. Um, uh, having online classes extends extends the opportunity to the students who are working full time because if you're working full time and you know coming to uh, uh, in person class is a lot of you know uh, it's a uh, it's a burden and it would be challenging to attend every in person class i mean even 70 uh, if you are taking four classes you know 70% would mean like three classes, you know, 75% uh, uh, would be uh, three classes, but um, uh, still um, uh, coming to, uh, you know, three in-person classes uh, would be very challenging. So, I mean, enrollment would go down uh, by insisting, you know, 70% in-person class. <clears throat> but anyway, uh, uh, that's, that's, that's something you know uh, um, that has to be uh, uh, decided. You know, uh, uh, I mean, decided by the uh, uh, the faculty and the administration. By the you know, it's you know, uh, by you know, according to the shared governance, shared governance. Well, <clears throat> anyway. Uh, 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 sorry about the uh, uh, delay. So let me um, go to, uh, so last time <coughs> we were talking about the uh, DuPont uh, equation and DuPont equation is a very interesting uh, thing uh, because uh, it, it gives you um, a perspective it gives you a perspective, right, about um, what all of these ratios mean. First of all, uh, every investor, right, um, whether you are, something is not right with my keyboard. Let me just. My keyboard is on. What's the problem? Something's not right. It's the battery. Battery's fine. All right. <clears throat> so <clears throat> for if you are an equity holder, in other words, stock holder, right? Uh, what is important to you is, oh yeah. What is important to you is return on equity. This is where your concern is. And then if you are um, a bond holder, if you're a bond holder, um, you would be looking at return on assets because uh, return on equity is irrelevant to the uh, bond holders or debt holders because the bond holders are not <clears throat> uh, the earnings uh, 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 the earnings uh, earnings per share uh, or the the, the aggregate uh, the totality of earnings per share is um, EAT and EAT doesn't uh, belong to the uh, debt holders, right? Uh, <clears throat> so from the uh, debt holders perspective, 
uh, return on equity is not a uh, uh, an important. Um, uh, it's not a relevant uh, measure. It's not a relevant measure. But then, um, uh, there is a connection between. Uh, we can. <clears throat> We can connect return on uh, equity with return on assets. Now, uh, the whole. Uh, so let's take a look at this, right? First of all, <clears throat> uh, return on assets have two versions. I told you about this last time. Return on assets. Uh, uh, there are two versions. One. Uh, <laughs> EBIT over uh, first version, right? EBIT over total assets. Second version is EAT over total assets. Okay, um, and from the uh, because EAT doesn't belong to the uh, debt holders um, or the bond holders, uh, this version is not really you know. Um, uh, well received by the debt holders but from the uh, uh, equity holders perspective this version is what is you know of interest to them and this version even over t uh, total assets that's what the uh, uh, this is what you know uh, actual all the stakeholders right this is the one that's relevant to all the stakeholders Ah, oh, come on. Why is it so difficult to write this thing? stakeholders and I told you last time that you know uh, um, uh, there are multiple stakeholders in a business right it's not only the stockholders but uh, uh, even the bond debt holders right bond holders um, and employees and the uh, uh, vendors, right? The companies that are selling uh, that that sell raw materials um, to this, you know, uh, uh, company if it is a manufacturer, right? In other words, the companies that are in the supply chain, in the supply chain with this company, right? They are, you know, they all need, they all uh, want this company to be successful, right? They all want this company to be uh, profitable because you know the, um, there is no employee that benefit from a company that uh, uh, that fails right there's no um, channel member um, and the channel member will not recover their accounts receivable if this company goes down uh, even the government I mean if this company goes down there is you know uh, one less tax source right um, and you know, uh, bondholders too. I mean, you know, bondholders want uh, this company to be 
uh, profitable so that uh, they would, you know, that will guarantee their, you know, uh, money back. They want, they will uh, get their money back. So for every stakeholder, right, uh, return on assets by this version is um, clearly, you know, uh, the relevant one. But this one is, the second one is mainly for the uh, uh, stockholders, right? The second one is mainly for stockholders. Okay. Or equity holders. Now, <clears throat> and then uh, looking at uh, <clears throat> so here ROA uh, the definition is num this is the second definition net income over total assets right net income over total assets um, net income EAT we can simply multiply it by sales over sales because sales revenue sales revenue sales over sales would be just one right because it's just you know uh, sales over sales cancels out it's just one so this is harmless it's innocuous it doesn't do anything it's just you know we we do it just for you know um, uh, but then <clears throat> we can because it's a multiplicative, you know, it's a multiplicative function, we can switch, right? We can switch places, you know, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, so uh, we can do net income, uh, we can switch the uh, uh, denominator. If we switch the denominator, it's still the same thing, right? Then uh, it becomes suddenly, right, net income over sales becomes return on sales. Right? It's also called profit margin. But think about it. How much net income or you know net profit for sales revenue? That ratio is called, so here, uh, uh, that ratio is called return on sales. And then uh, on the right hand side, <clears throat> revenue over total assets. Uh, what's that called? That's that's total assets turnover ratio. Isn't that right? You remember? So let me rewrite it here. So here, if I rewrite, um, rewriting ROA, which is an you know, uh, EAT over total assets. Then we just multiply it by revenue. Okay, you should be uh, flexible, very flexible, because the terminology. If I, uh, some people cannot easily, you know, um, uh, catch up uh, when I switch the term from sales to revenue. But you know, it's the same thing, isn't it? Right? Revenue is sales revenue. Sales means revenue. Revenue means sales, right? Um, So uh, call this, you know, revenue, right? And then we simply switch the uh, denominator, right? And then uh, and then what is that? Um, then it is you know, EAT, which is net profit, right? EAT over revenue times revenue over total assets. Okay, so you. <coughs> You understand this, right? Because uh, think about it. <clears throat> Whether you do, you know, um, uh, 
uh, three over six times uh, two over five. It's the same thing, or it's the same thing as same result, right? Please call it the same thing. Ah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Whether you do it like that or still the same thing, right? Because anyway, the uh, denominator is still uh, 30, right? <clears throat> so it's um, then uh, interesting thing is then. Uh, <clears throat> this is called a, this is called a profit margin or return on sales. Okay. And then this is called revenue over total assets. That's called total assets turnover ratio. Remember from the last class, do you remember in the last class we talked about fixed assets turnover ratio, right? Uh, one of the asset management, <clears throat> um, we did two, we talked about two most representative, uh, and uh, so one of them is uh, inventory turnover ratio, right? Inventory uh, turnover ratio, which is, you know, um, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> Revenue over uh, average inventory, right? In case of you know uh, uh, retail, and uh, if it is you know manufacturing, it's going to be CGS over average inventory, right? Um, and then another one was, you know, a fixed assets turnover ratio. Okay, so fixed assets turnover ratio. Which is, you know, uh, again, Revenue over fixed assets. And <clears throat> these are asset management ratios. And uh, what they do is basically um, uh, giving you the, uh, uh, it, it's, it's measure, it measures, they measure the productivity of the assets, the productivity of the assets. Okay. <clears throat> uh, So, <clears throat> and just like fixed assets turnover ratio, then total assets turnover ratio will be total assets turnover ratio, the same thing. Basically, uh, how much contribution? How much contribution does you know these things have towards the uh, revenue? Right. <clears throat> If you think about it, inventory is part of the uh, uh, current assets. Uh, we don't have current assets turnover ratio because uh, uh, the other part of the other than inventory, um, other you know liquid assets, the financial assets in turnover, uh, financial assets and current assets uh, do not directly contribute to the uh, uh, sales. Right, but what contributes to the sales is, of course, the inventory. Right, because in inventory, if if you are a, uh, a retailer, inventory is already the uh, merchandise, right, uh, ready to sell. So that contributes directly to the uh, uh, revenue, sales, re uh, sales revenue, 
and if uh, fixed assets will uh, uh, contribute to uh, the revenue. <clears throat> uh, so that way, um, uh, uh, inventory turnover ratio is sort of representing the uh, uh, contribution to revenue of the current assets, and fixed assets turnover ratio uh, represents the uh, contribution of the uh, fixed assets to the uh, revenue. Total assets turnover ratio, literally, contribution of total assets to revenue. <clears throat> so, therefore, um, and uh, so, net profit or EAT over revenue is called a return on sale, literally. Right? How much? Uh, uh, what? What? Uh, what is the percentage of? What's the percentage of net profit out of the uh, uh, revenue, sales revenue? So normally they call it profit margin, right? Another name for that is profit margin. And this is total assets turnover ratio, right? I want to I wanted to make it a nice circle, but uh, yeah, total assets turnover ratio. It's called right. Total assets turnover ratio. So. <clears throat> We can break it down like this. Uh, we can break down the uh, total uh, uh, return on assets like this. And further, right, uh, what we can do further, right, um, uh, think about uh, how we can break down return on equity. We can, uh, first of all, uh, we know return on equity is net, uh, net profit over equity. Also, let's try this, sales over sales, time sales over sales, which is one, right? Uh, times total assets over total assets, which is also one, right? Then, hmm. ah, come on. But you know we can do you know uh, uh, mix and match or uh, bake and shake, shake and bake or whatever. Uh, do a little you know uh, shake and bake. Um, so then you know uh, 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 switch some you know uh, denominators right. Uh, so we see you know uh, net uh, net profit over sale. Right times sale uh, sales revenue net profit over revenue, which is you know uh, we already know what this is called a return on sale right, and then times you know uh, uh, revenue over total assets, which is you know total assets turnover ratio, and then uh, total assets over equity. Total assets over equity is called equity multiplier. Simply called why? Um, uh, it simply means you know. Uh, how many times the uh, uh, equity are the total assets? How many times the equity are the total assets? In other words, um, so um, this may sound like a, uh, okay, let me write it. So ROE, right, times revenue over revenue times total assets over total assets, right? And then uh, do a little, you know, um, shake and bake. Then this is, you know, uh, uh, EAT 
mover uh, equity. And do a little shake and bake, you know. Um, numerators, I mean denominators, we can switch the denominators. EAT over revenue times revenue over total assets. And then here, uh, total assets over revenue. Uh, equity, I'm sorry, equity. Total SS or equity. And it's cold, right? Um, return on sale or profit margin. And this is a you know, total SS turnover ratio. And equity multiplier. <clears throat> and think about it. We already know um, Return on sales times total assets turnover ratio is ROA. We already found we already found that uh, ROA is uh, return on sale times total assets turnover ratio. So come on. So this is called, you know, uh, ROA, and then equity multiplier. Now, equity multiplier is literally, right, as I said, uh, hey, oh. Uh, if you flip the equity multiplier, right? If you flip the equity multiplier, think about it. Um, another way of looking at equity multiplier is um, uh, equity ratio. To the negative one, inverse of the uh, reciprocal of the equity ratio. So, what is equity ratio? It's exactly the reciprocal of the equity multiplier. In other words, uh, okay, let me move it here. Let's think about it. Let me use this. We know what is total debt to total. Uh, uh, to, uh, debt ratio or total, total debt to total assets ratio. Uh, it's called debt ratio. Debt ratio is what? Total debt over total assets, right? But then what is one minus debt ratio then? One minus that ratio would be then equity over total assets. Isn't that right? One minus that ratio should be equity over total assets, which is then what? It should, shouldn't it be called, you know, uh, equity ratio then? This must be called equity ratio. If this is called, if this is that ratio, right, then it's only fair to call this equity ratio. 
right? Because it's the complement of, right? One minus that ratio must be equity ratio, right? Isn't that right? It must be equity ratio. But then equity ratio is equity over total assets. But then look, um, equity multiplier is the reciprocal of this, in other words, right? Um, if you do this, right, then this becomes total assets over equity, right? So it's exactly the uh, reciprocal of the equity ratio, and which is you know, called then equity multiplier, right? So if the uh, um, uh, equity ratio is, let's say, six, uh, 70%, if the equity ratio is 70%, right? That means that ratio is 30%. So it's capital structure, basically. It's capital structure. If the um, equity ratio is 70%, uh, of course, that means, you know, uh, uh, that is 30%, right? But then the reciprocal of this is going to be, you know, 1 over 0.7, right? If you take, uh, find, uh, take the reciprocal, it's going to be 1 over 0.7, which would be like, you know, uh, uh, 1.3 something, right? Which is called, you know, equity multiplier. Okay. So we can uh, we can uh, break it down like this. Um, so finally, return on equity is return on assets times equity multiplier. So. Um, that's the connection between ROE and ROA, right? Uh, in other words, uh, so finally, um, but that's not the uh, really the final thing. Uh, that's only the beginning. Okay. So that means ROE is ROA times total assets over equity, right? So if you know ROA, and then, you know, if you have balance sheet data, then you can, from that, you can easily find uh, return on equity, right? Uh, and then uh, it can be extended. So once it is extended, it's going to look like, um, okay, so um, uh, decomposition of ROE. Uh, it's called DuPont system because du, uh, the chemical company DuPont, right? Um, uh, DuPont is not, may not seem like a very, uh, you know, hot or sexy company these days. I mean, it's not uh, these days, and you know, of course, companies like uh, Google, Apple, you know, uh, Amazon, Facebook, uh, they are uh, like, you know, um, uh, very appealing, you know, uh, coveted by uh, job seekers. Of course, not, you know, not Amazon, you know, <laughs> not as the uh, uh, warehouse staff. Uh, but back in 1940s and 50s, right, DuPont was the uh, Google of the of that of that time, right? And so they were like, you know. 
Uh, think about it. What what do the uh, what do the people what do the employees of Google do? What do the employees of Apple do uh, and the Facebook do? I mean, uh, are they uh, because it is Google? All they are only doing only you know uh, software engineering. Uh, all you know, um, Facebook is all everyone in the Facebook is only doing the uh, uh, web uh, web page thing. No, they are actually doing a lot of, you know, uh, 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 spearhead. Uh, uh, they are developing a lot of, you know, uh, IT, spearhead IT technologies, which isn't directly related to uh, the Facebook or which isn't directly related to Google. Uh, Google is basically a search engine, but what what has Google, you know, developed a lot of things like mo most of the Internet of Things, Internet of Things, right? Uh, not uh, Google Maps, you know, Google uh, Earth, you know, a lot of things. You know, it's not just you know a search engine. You know, they are um, like you know pushing the envelope. They are pioneers in uh, uh, IT. And back in the uh, 1970s, uh, Xerox, Xerox was like, you know, uh, uh, what Google uh, is now, 1970s, Xerox. But 1950s, DuPont was like that. A lot of good things came out of, you know, uh, uh, a spillover. It's called spillover, right? Uh, from their R&D, a lot of good things spilled over. Um, <clears throat> So uh, in 1950s, DuPont, uh, 40s and 50s, came up with, uh, from their you know, research, I mean, uh, uh, they, they came up with a lot of good things. First of all, uh, so return on equity is basically net profit, EAT over equity, right? Uh, and then uh, we can also rewrite it as net profit over pre-tax profit. Uh, it's uh, so think about it. Pre-tax profit is EBT, right? Isn't that right? So let, let me rewrite this. First, they came up with something like uh, uh, it's like uh, how about if we do this? Uh, if we do it like this, so ROE. is EAT over uh, equity and then uh, EBT over EBT because all, all these things are basically you know uh, one right EBT over EBT will be one and then EBIT over EBIT will be one. So basically, uh, it's harmlessly, right? Innocuously, you can do this because anyway, uh, they will all cancel out, right? Uh, uh, what's what's going on? And then what else? EBT or EBT, and then. Uh, revenue over revenue, revenue over revenue, and asset over assets, total assets, revenue over revenue over revenue times total assets over total assets. So think about it. It's all harmless or, you know, uh, it doesn't do anything because uh, it doesn't do anything to the original uh, ratio, right? It doesn't do anything to the original, um, right? Original value of this ratio, right? 
because they will all, but then by doing a little shake and bake, by doing a little shake and bake, right? Um, we can, again, then we can switch the uh, denominators, right? So this becomes EAT over, what can I do? Uh, <clears throat> EBT, I believe, you know what they did. EAT over, Yeah, EBT and EBT over EBIT. EBIT over, oh, I'm sorry. Right, the pretext profit, EBT over, and then what else? EBIT over revenue. And then Revenue over total assets, right? Yeah. Right, then times, you know, total assets over equity. And we know the story here now. Then, <clears throat> uh -uh. Then think about it. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we haven't we haven't put a name to this just yet. It's EAT over EBT. Uh, we haven't put a name here yet, but we'll we'll get there. Uh, it's uh, EBT over EBIT. Uh, we know what this is. You know, um, uh, it's profit margin. Uh, but again, you know, uh, you might wonder, isn't profit margin EAT over sales? Uh, yes, but you know, uh, uh, from, uh, it's called, you know, uh, but this would be rather called operating profit margin, operating profit margin, right? And then this is, you know, uh, uh, our um, uh, re a total assets turnover ratio, and this is equity multiplier. So then, uh, eventually, we come to um, so then, uh, what is net profit over equity? Uh, uh, I mean, you know, that's ROE. What is then, you know, net profit over e EBT? That's tax burden, basically, right? Uh, think about it. From EBT, think about it. From EBT, if you uh, subtract taxes, right, then that will be EAT, net profit. Isn't that right? Uh, <clears throat> So then this is tax burden.
In other words, how much of the taxable income, this means EAT over EBT is how much of the EBT, what percentage of EBT is EAT, right? So therefore, uh, it's the tax burden. And then uh, EBT over EBIT is uh, how much of the uh, uh, operating profit uh, is interest. Right? The difference between EBIT and EBT is interest, isn't it right? It's quite obvious from it's quite obvious from this. From the difference between the two is you know uh, I, which is you know missing here. This is gone, right? This I is gone. Uh, so the difference between EBT and EBIT is the interest. Difference between EAT and EBT is the tax, right? So this is called, you know, interest burden. And then <clears throat> EBIT over revenue, EBIT over revenue is uh, ROA, broadly defined ROA. Isn't that right? This is, you know, uh, ROA. I told you, two versions of ROA, right? One for the shareholders only, and the other one, uh, EBIT over <clears throat> revenue. No, 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 not ROA. What, what am I? Uh, EBIT over revenue. So that's, you know, uh, actually uh, ROS, um, uh, right? This is uh, uh, broadly defined uh, profit margin or return on sale. And then revenue over total assets is the profit margin. No, no, no. revenue over, uh, I mean, total, uh, what am I talking about? Uh, total assets turnover ratio. Uh, profit margin is ROS, another name for uh, return on sale, right? Hard to draw. Perfect circle. Uh, another name for that, profit margin. And this is called, you know, uh, uh, total assets turnover ratio. So, some I quoted those. Tato, total assets turnover ratio, right? And then equity multiplier, right? times equity multiplier. Okay, so uh, it's quite interesting that we can uh, break down or decompose, right, uh, the ROE this way, right? It's ROE, right, return on equity, and return on equity is the result of uh, all, uh, it's a, uh, compounded result of all of this. Um, return on equity is finally a compounded result of all of this. Tax burden times, interest burden times, uh, profit margin times, total assets turnover times, equity multiplier, right? 
of course, this may uh, say this may look like you know this may look very uh, mouthful, but you know um, let's say we have uh, no uh, we don't have original data we don't have let's say uh, the primary source of data which is you know uh, uh, balance sheet and income statement. <clears throat> So uh, if you don't have the original source, a uh, primary source of data, then at least if you have like, you know, uh, what is the tax burden? What's the interest burden? What's the uh, profit margin? Even, you know, uh, approximately, what is the total assets turnover ratio? What's the equity multiplier? Uh, if you know these, you know, information separately, then uh, still you can find return on equity, right? Uh, as an approximation. All right. Uh, I think it's a good time. It's 10.42. Uh, it's a good time to take a break, a 10-minute break. So let's take a 10-minute break and return at uh, uh, 10.55. Okay. We'll give ourselves a little, you know, a couple of more minutes. Uh, return at 10.55. Uh, and then, you know, uh, uh, we'll you know, finally wrap up the uh, uh, the whole you know uh, the whole thing the whole Dupont modified Dupont chart. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Any questions? Any questions so far? Any questions? Any questions? All right. I'll take it as no. Okay. Good. Uh, let's take a ten minute break. Okay.
All right, we're back. We're back. Um, so uh, back to the uh, uh, wonderful world of DuPont chart. Okay, uh, not wonderful world of Disney, but uh, wonderful world of DuPont chart um, or DuPont uh, DuPont system. Um, so. Uh, uh, we uh, in the last um, in the last session we um, <clears throat> we broke down ROE into uh, uh, several components, right? Uh, ROE is basically you know uh, uh, it can be you know eventually broken down into a tax burden times interest burden times. Uh, profit margin time, right? These are names, you know, uh, but, you know, uh, mathematically, tax burden is EAT over EBT, right? Interest burden is EBT over EBIT, right? Um, return on say a profit margin is EBIT over revenue, right? Uh, uh, TATO, uh, total assets, total ratio is revenue over total assets. And uh, equity multiplier is total assets over equity. Um, and then finally, uh, Tato times equity multiplier is uh, think about it. Uh, uh, so rearranging it again, uh, rearranging it uh, this way. Um, So finally, rearranging it like, you know, uh, first, uh, we can further rearrange. We can further rearrange that as uh, EAT over EBT, I mean, in, in uh, that exact order, uh, uh, times. Now, uh, think about it. Um, and then, uh, times a bit over revenue, right? In other words, you know, uh, I switched I. Uh, I switched, you know, um, a couple of things, you know, uh, a bit over revenue and then Uh, times uh, total assets turnover. Uh, which is revenue over total assets. And then times then uh, interest burden which is you know um, EBT over EBIT times Equity multiplier, which is an uh, total assets over equity. Now, <clears throat> so um, 
I just you know switched around a few uh, a few things um, to make it look to to have a big picture, right? Uh, so what did I do? Uh, basically, you know, uh, uh, you see, uh, maybe like. Right. And then Okay. And then I sent this to this switched around like this. Then um Then it becomes, you know, the whole thing becomes, right? Um, this thing is still a uh, tax burden, EAT over EBT, which is tax burden. And then this thing is ROA, isn't it right? Revenue, revenue, cancel out. Revenue and revenue cancel out. So it's going to be EBT over TA, total assets. So it's return on assets, right? And then times and over uh, uh, the rest of them, right? And the rest of them are called, right? Um, Compound leverage, uh, compound leverage factor, or name is yeah, compound leverage factor, which is you know uh, basically you know uh, this times this called you know, compound leverage factor, and if you think about it. And again, we know that this is tax burden. And then, uh, look, um, Uh, EBT over EBIT is interest burden, right? Interest burden, right? This thing is interest burden, right? And then um, uh, uh, and equity multiplier is, uh, think about it, equity multiplier is in a way a measure of productivity of equity. I mean, in other words, um, or uh, rather, I mean, not, not the productivity of equity, but uh, uh, the burden of the uh, the burden of the uh, uh, equity that uh, that the burden burden of the total assets that the equity sh uh, shoulders right is the burden of the total assets that the equity shoulders if you think about it right think about it total assets is a family right <laughs> and equity is the main bread earner right. So if the main so if there are four people in the four persons in the family, if it's a four-person family, 
uh, household. Uh, equity is like the uh, uh, the father who uh, or the main bread earner of the family. And the main bread earner is the uh, shouldering the uh, burden of this family, right? Supporting burden of supporting this family. And then uh, that uh, main bread earner is facing the uh, uh, interest burden, whole interest burden. So that's why it's called compound leverage factor, right? Uh, I mean, whatever name they gave, you know, uh, uh, it's not really, you know, uh, a big deal, whatever name they call it, it's not really the big deal. But the, uh, uh, the point is, you know, um, if you can break it down, if you can decompose it this way, it gives you a, uh, uh, a pretty cool uh, insight, a pretty cool, you know, uh, analytical picture of uh, what return on equity, where the return on equity stand from. Right, where the uh, return on equity stands from, right? It's the uh, compound result of tax burden times return on assets times, you know, compound leverage factor. Or, you know, uh, forget about the names, but at least you will know it's, uh, uh, you can, you know, break it down like this. Okay, so it, it, it's com it looks complicated, but, you know, uh, 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 I think it is kind of cool. I wouldn't say uh, it's beautiful, but you know, I would say it looks cool to be able to, uh, uh, you know, break it down like this. And the uh, uh, the pinnacle. I mean, uh, to put a, a, a capstone on it, to put a capstone or a headstone or whatever. To put a, a, a capstone on it, um, modified DuPont chart. Let's take a look at modified DuPont chart. And this gives a lot of, um, why did it? This gives a lot of uh, insight into, you know, uh, uh, into the whole, you know, uh, 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 concept of, you know, uh, uh, return on equity, right? Now, first of all, uh, we know return on equity is, we know that the return on equity is ROA times uh, total assets uh, uh, equity multiplier, right? ROA times equity multiplier, right? And then uh, uh, let's look into the breakdown of ROA, return on assets. Return on assets is basically, you know, uh, profit margin, ROS, right? Profit margin, return on sale. Uh, times total assets turnover ratio. Now, ROS or return on uh, sale is basically what? Uh, uh, EAT over sales, sales revenue, EAT over sales revenue. And this looks complicated, but that's EAT. And total assets turnover ratio is revenue over total assets. So let's see why this is EAT. I mean, it's just another way of now think about it. To arrive at EAT. Uh, go back to the uh, income statement and think about it. From EBIT, you must subtract interest, right? And then you arrive at EBT. And then from there, you'll need to subtract tax, right, taxes.
then you arrive at EAT. But then think about it. Uh, uh, to put it in another way, what is interest payment? What's interest payment? Isn't interest payment EBIT times uh, EBIT times interest rate, right? And that's EBT, right? EBIT times interest rate is EBT, right? Uh, okay. Uh, but, you know, we didn't, uh, we didn't even have to do this, you know, uh, that's fine. Uh, but we know uh, EBIT minus interest is, um, and then uh, from uh, what is taxes? Taxes is uh, basically um, EBT times tax rate. That's Greek character tau, Greek character tau, and Greek character tau is Roman alphabet T. And so what does it, what would it stand for? It stands for tax, tax rate, tax rate, right? So then think about it. Uh, Uh, EBT, since EBT is, uh, we can rewrite EBT then as, so we can rewrite EBT as um, EBIT minus taxes, which is uh, taxes are EBT times tax rate. Okay, then think about it. If I rewrite it for, if I solve it for EBIT, then how can I write EBIT? Then from this, EBIT can be written as Um, uh, let me do this. E, uh, so uh, let me first then, um, EAT is then what? EAT is um, EBT minus EBT times tax rate. So then think about it. What, EBT is a um, EBT is a uh, common factor, so you can factor out EBT, and it's going to be one one minus tax rate. Okay. But then what is EBT? Hmm? What is EBT? Isn't EBT EBIT minus interest? That's what EBT is. So simply replacing EBT by its own definition, right? Right, it's EBIT minus interest. And then times one minus tax rate. This way we have, this way, that's what EAT is. Okay, is everyone okay with that? 
I simply yeah. rewrote. I said, yeah. yeah, we're okay with that. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, yeah, good. This all, you know, falls into place. This all makes, you know, a perfectly logical sense. Since, you know, uh, uh, <coughs> EBT, uh, EAT is EBT minus EBT times tax rate. A factor out EBT, common factor, then it's EBT times, right? One minus tax rate. Um, and then, you know, since EBT is EBIT minus interest, right? By definition, right? By definition, right? So uh, it's EAT is eventually, right? Right? EBIT minus interest times or minus uh, tax rate. That's another way of writing EAT. Okay, that's another way of writing EAT. In other words, you know, uh, it's an analytical, it's an analytical way of writing EAT. In other words, uh, all this DuPont system was basically an ana analytical look at ROE, right? So everything is about, you know, uh, um, the analysis, right? Analytical uh, decomposition, right? Decomposition is basically, you know, uh, breakdown. Breakdown is analysis, basically. So... Um, Uh, sometimes, you know, uh, 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 sometimes, you know, uh, um, you should be familiar with uh, different notations. Sometimes EAT, they call this what? Uh, you know what they call this? This is also sometimes called uh, NOPAT. What is that? That means net operating profit after taxes. Net operating profit after taxes. Right? That's exact. Net operating profit. So uh, think about it. What is operating profit? If it is operating profit, right? EBIT is operating profit, isn't that right? EBIT is uh, operating profit. Operating profit after taxes. So that's earnings after taxes, right? The same thing as earnings after tax. Net, that means you subtracted interest and, right? Interest, right? So net operating profit after tax. That's, you know, accounting is trying to, uh, I mean, uh, it's also analytical way of looking at it, right? It's also analytical way of looking at it. But uh, unless you get used to it, accounting is trying to, uh, it's, it almost looks like that accounting is trying to throw you off with a lot of jargons and terminology. But Jargons and terminology are all, you know, uh, analytical, right? Even EBIT, you know, how analytical is EBIT? And I like it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, you know, it's a beautiful way of defining, I mean, it's, uh, maybe not beautiful, but it's a very effective and efficient way of describing what it is. Earnings after, uh, earnings before interest and taxes. Then you can tell what's going to happen next. You'll have to pay out interest. And then it's going to be called EBT, right? So you can tell uh, what's going to happen next, and you'll pay taxes. You pay taxes, so it should be called EAT, earnings after taxes. And another way of uh, looking at it is operating profit, which is EBIT, another name for EBIT, operating profit, after taxes. So that's EAT, net operating yeah, net. So you net it out. You subtracted interest, right? 
So if you get this analytical view, it's not a difficult thing. It just makes totally, it just makes total sense. It just makes perfect, perfectly total sense or totally perfect sense, right? All right, and then now, uh, there were four, where was I? Uh, back here. And if we, um, so you see what that is, that's ROS, right? I, I wish I could uh, write it. Uh, uh, at least I think I can do. Okay, what I'm talking about is, hey, come on, uh, this part, right? Ah, I wish I could. Um, EB, EBIT minus interest times one minus tau C, uh, the subscript C means corporate, corporate tax rate, right? So that's, you know, uh, over sales, that's, you know, uh, uh, ROS, right? Profit margin, which is ROS, right? And then uh, further, breaking it down further, it's one over uh, sales. That means, you know, uh, divided by sales, right? If you multiply something by one over something, that's dividing, basically. Uh, net income over sales. Net income over, what's net income? Net, net income is net profit. Net profit is exactly this EBIT minus, right? And then net profit can uh, break down into revenue minus cost, total cost, right? So here, um, This whole thing, which is you know uh, uh, EAT or uh, NOPAT, EAT, right? Another name for that is net profit or net income. Where is it? Net profit or net income. Okay, net profit or net income, and then you divide it by uh, uh, sales, then, you know, that's ROS, right? I would call, I would say revenue, right? And there's ROS, and then, uh, of course, you know, because we have equal sign. Uh, but then net profit breaks down into, um, yeah. What happened? Why is it? Net profit is then um, revenue minus cost, right? The cost here means both direct cost and indirect cost, right? Revenue is like income, right? Uh, uh, gross income, right? And the cost means, of course, a C 
CGS and OPEX, right? Of course, only and you know, uh, subtracting that and then, you know, interest in um, uh, subtracting uh, from after that, you know, interest in uh, taxes. But they, you know, just uh, in this chart, they made it very simple, right? Uh, revenue minus cost, basically uh, income, right? Uh, profit. And the total cost breaks down into, yeah, CGS plus operating expenses. And then interest plus preferred dividends. I mean, um, uh, suddenly they brought up preferred dividends. Um, preferred dividends are like interest. I mean, dividends are dividends to common stock. Dividends to common stock are paid from, paid out from EAT. But the uh, dividends to preferred stock is like interest. So if there is no uh, uh, preferred stock and uh, the dividends will be treated like interest. So it comes before paying taxes. And then uh, you pay taxes, right? And then uh, 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 actually the depreciation, um, and the, uh, the depreciation is part of the uh, OPEX. Depreciation is part of the operating expenses. So it doesn't need to be out here separately uh, unless it is for, you know, uh, uh, cash, right? Uh, unless it is for cash flow. But anyway, um, the breakdown is, you know, basically uh, following exactly the uh, uh, what is in the income statement, right? The bottom Bottom line is the uh, exactly the income uh, structure of the income statement, right? The uh, cost part of an income statement, uh, revenue minus uh, uh, CGS plus operating expenses, interest and taxes. That, right, will give you uh, net profit or EAT. Now, then the. Uh, 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 because ROA is profit margin times total assets turnover ratio, total TATO, right? And TATO is revenue over total assets, which is, you know, basically sales times one over total assets. That's what, that's what it is, you know, sales over, sales times one over total assets. And um, the only reason they broke it down again is to, uh, uh, separate, uh, isolate total assets only. And the total assets is basically uh, 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 comprised of fixed assets and current assets. Uh, <clears throat> current assets consists of cash and cash equivalents and short-term investment and inventories. So um, eventually, um, uh, if I were to, uh, this this is like a, a, a genealogy tree, right? You understand? You know the genealogy tree, right? Genealogy tree, you know. Uh, but interesting thing is, you know, um, in chronological order, um, I mean, for for example. Um, ah. Most of the, the uh, genealogy tree uh, has, um, so if you, this is you or, you know, uh, me or whatever, uh, let's say you. This is you and you come from, right? both parents, right? Father and mother. And father and mother comes from also uh, father and mother, grand, uh, so grandparents. Um, and then it goes down, you know, all the way to whoever, you know, a tree, if you think of it as a tree, if you think of it as a tree, um, uh, the root is in the ground, so it would 
the root is in the ground, so it would be like an upward, right? Uh, the root is in the ground, so uh, you will be the final product, final outcome of this tree, right? But uh, uh, I would prefer I would prefer the inverse uh, picture, inverse tree. Why? Uh, because you descended from, I mean, there must be the forefather, the, uh, the progenitor of the progenitor, um, the ancestor, right? There is no, um, there's your, you know, uh, ancestor, uh, like, you know, Great, 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 great grandmother, grandfather. And then they would have children. Uh, they had children. And children had children. Children's children had children. And uh, you would be, you, you have descended from this primary ancestor, right? Primary ancestor. And then... Uh, finally, uh, you would have a lot of uh, relatives, you know, um, remote, close, and remote, right? Both close and remote, remote, and then you would be one of them. You would just be one of them. You would just be one of those myriad of uh, relatives, and then the would be you and you are not you know even you would have siblings from your you know uh, parents i mean this looks more chronological and this makes more <laughs> sense but if you if your genealogy tree if you look at it this way i think you're very selfish and self-centered right as if um i mean there's nothing uh, i mean uh, um Scientifically, I mean, uh, there's nothing wrong with this. I mean, uh, the root is, the root of the tree is on the ground. And of course, the tree will bear a lot of fruit and you would be one of them. But, you know, uh, <laughs> you are so self-centered. I mean, as if uh, everything else, everyone else who existed before you existed, had existed only for you, right? Um, so that's a very self-centered view. And having your primary ancestor down at the bottom is very, uh, it seems very inappropriate, right? <laughs> it's like they are, um, uh, but having your primary ancestor on top, that that's more, you know, uh, uh, there's more humbleness, you know, uh, I'm only a uh, fruit of this giant tree, you know, and uh, uh, rooted in the uh, primary ancestor, and I am only one of, one of the many outcomes of the uh, uh, primary ancestor, right? I mean, if you have this uh, uh, view of the genealogy tree, uh, uh, the DuPont chart may be a little bit difficult to understand. But if you have uh, this view of genealogy tree, then um, this won't be that difficult to understand. This is uh, exactly like the genealogy tree from the uh, roots, right? And or from the ingredients uh, to the uh, final outcome, right? All right. So any any questions? Any questions so far? Any questions? No questions so far. All righty. Good. Good. Um, all right. So that wraps up everything about the uh, ratio analysis. Uh,
Uh, there are some other examples. Uh, these are the examples. Uh, here, uh, you will see what, uh, okay, what is NOPAT, <laughs> right? NOPAT is EAT, right? Uh, so this wraps up everything about the uh, 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 ratio analysis. Uh, and then we will move on to the uh, next uh, topic, which is uh, net present value, right? Net present value, uh, 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 capital budgeting and net present value. I mean, this is already, uh, main lecture has already covered it. Um, Let's do the uh, all right. I'll switch this. Okay, um, so it's uh, 11, almost 11.40, so it's about a good time to take a 10-minute break. So let's take a 10-minute break and uh, reconvene at 11.50, okay? 11.50, all righty, a 10-minute break.
All right, we're back. We're back. Um, so I gotta share my screen, <laughs> and uh, so there you are. Okay. So now we are into capital budgeting. Uh, capital budgeting and net present value. This is relatively easy because you know uh, net present value is basically an extension of present value, uh, <clears throat> and capital budgeting uh, uh, is uh, literally you know the bud budgeting. The term budgeting means you know uh, 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 how we accommodate uh, planned expenditure planned, you know, capital expenditure within the budget, right? <clears throat> uh, planned expenditure is, you know, uh, expenditure on long-term projects. And so let's, I, and I also mentioned this before, uh, the projects that the businesses undertake can fall into uh, three categories, replacement, expansion, or new venture. Now think about it. replacement. Simply, you know, um, we understand that uh, all <clears throat> uh, capital equipment, right, plant and equipment, uh, depreciate due to wear and tear, right? And the wear and tear uh, doesn't only lower the value of uh, uh, the dollar value of those assets, but also uh, it lowers the productivity, it lowers the productivity of your plant, of your, you know, uh, plant. Now, this is a, a serious, <clears throat> this is a serious issue, isn't it right? If your uh, plant and equipment, uh, if your productivity goes down, it's a serious issue because uh, uh, you will be uh, less capable of, I mean, you will be supplying, basically your output will go down, your output level will go down, and as your output level goes down, uh, as your output level goes down, uh, The, uh, you will be uh, losing your market share. Not only the revenue, uh, not only the uh, revenue goes down, but also you'll be losing uh, your market share. Losing market share is a, uh, a serious thing, right? If you think about it, losing market share is like a, it's a very um, detrimental uh, thing to your business. It's a disaster, <clears throat> in other words. So, um, uh, to prevent to prevent your uh, business from losing your market share and losing your uh, revenue, uh, you must uh, replace the worn worn out portion of your uh, capital, physical capital, right? Worn out portion or replenish, right? Replace or replenish, right? Whatever, you know. Um, and then, or not just, not just replace, because replacing will only uh, just uh, maintain the existing market share. If you want to gain more market share, you'll need to uh, increase your production capacity. And to increase your production capacity, you will need to expand, right? Expand your, you know, uh, plant size, right? So expansion is another um, type of project. Or otherwise, it's going to be a whole new venture. I mean, not just the existing uh, product line, uh, not just the existing line of business, but expand, uh, uh, expanding into a new line of business, new venture, right? And they will all cost money, right? They will all cost uh, capital expenditure, right? 
uh, and the uh, each type of uh, uh, capital projects, uh, capital projects have increasing risk according to whether they are replacements, expansion, or new venture. Of course, replacement risk is just the same because you're still in the same line of business and you're not, uh, you're just maintaining uh, uh, the existing production capacity, existing size of the plant. So it will be maintaining just the existing output, maintaining existing uh, market share, right? So uh, there is hardly any new risk, but expansion will um, expansion will uh, pose risk. Why? So uh, let's say you increase your output by ten uh, percent. Increasing output by ten percent will, or uh, even you know, uh, let's let's be more bold. Let's be more bold. 50% increase the output capacity by 50%. Increasing output capacity by 50% means you know, increasing the plant size by 50%, which would cost uh, a lot of money, right? I mean, if, if your sunk cost, you remember sunk cost, the initial investment, right? You remember that? Uh, initial, um, let's see, uh, eight people. Uh, you remember the sunk cost, right? Sunk cost, the initial investment in the project, which is no, uh, so uh, if your current plant uh, required the initial investment of uh, $100 million, right? Uh, expanding the capacity by 50% would require uh, like $50 million, right? It's a huge commitment. And then what if after expanding the capacity by 50%, what if the, uh, you know, uh, the, the demand isn't, um, uh, demand uh, isn't big enough. I mean, uh, if the demand also grows by 50%, then the 50% uh, overproduction, right? Fif uh, additional 50% production of your uh, output, your goods, will be all uh, exhausted, will be all sold, right? But if the demand, if the pent-up demand wasn't like 50% of the previous uh, existing level, uh, previous level of demand, in that case, you know, you're in trouble, you know, it's a risk. I mean, you have invested $50 million, but that $50 million won't uh, return, won't give you, uh, won't, you know, uh, turnover. You understand? The fixed assets turnover ratio, right? Uh, I mean, if you have additional 50% of plant, right, for 50% increase in production capacity, uh, but, you know, uh, it doesn't generate revenue, right? Uh, enough revenue to uh, to recover that of course the recovery of the uh, uh, capital investment will ha will occur over many years over multiple years not just in the first year right but you know let's say um, your you know a forecast is that uh, in five years you will recover you will recover the initial investment right and then you know uh, from the sixth year uh, and you know uh, uh, you will be you know uh, uh, you will be in net profit right uh, Capital expenditure will take time to recover its, you know, uh, the initial investment. Now the thing is, if that doesn't turn out to be profitable, the demand doesn't increase as as much as expected. 
then you will be stuck with a lot of loss. This is clearly a risk, right? Expansion comes with the risk because uh, uh, the new uh, demand has not been uh, tested or confirmed, right? I mean, a 50% increase was too ambitious, right? That's the risk. And then next, uh, the risk is the highest when you are taking on a new venture. If you're taking on a new venture, it's a, a new line of business. It's, not, it's a new environment, new market, and you are relatively, uh, you may be uh, a well-known uh, company in uh, 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 some other line of business, but uh, in this line of business, in the new line of business, you are a novice. I mean, you're not a well-known company. Well, of course, if you have uh, brand equity, a strong brand equity, strong brand equity, uh, it will pave the road. Basically, it will pave the road for the even uh, for the new market. But you know, still, it won't be. There's no guarantee. Uh, uh, for example, Nike is a uh, <laughs> very well-known. Uh, you know, uh, shoe brand, right? Nike is a very well-known, uh, uh, not only shoe brand, but sporting goods, you know, but mainly shoes, right? Nike is quite well-known. Uh, but if Nike is uh, dabbling into, uh, uh, dabbling into electric vehicle, right? Obviously, it's not Nike's core competency, right? Uh, to dabble into electric vehicle, they will have to buy out. They will have to acquire some existing electric vehicle company. But under the name, under the brand name Nike, uh, will it be? I don't know. I mean, Nike started out as shoes, right? But then, you know, uh, uh, all other sporting goods, right? Even golf. Golf clubs, you know, golf, uh, golf apparel, uh, golf uh, clubs, golf equipment. You know, Nike uh, is well, relatively well uh, embraced in the market because Nike is a, a, a household name in uh, in sports, right? But that doesn't mean you know it can be well embraced. Uh, if Nike is trying to uh, 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 launch electric vehicle, right? That's completely a new venture. And so it will be a very risky project. It will be highly risky because obviously it will require a lot of capital to build, uh, uh, you know, I mean, if they either to build from the scratch or acquiring an existing electric vehicle company, right? The price tag on the uh, technology alone would be, uh, uh, you know, uh, probably hundreds of billions of dollars, hundreds of billions of dollars, okay? Now, and some projects are standalone, or mutually exclusive. Yeah, you can have a standalone projects that have no competing alternatives. So uh, then such a project is judged on its own viability. But mutually exclusive projects involve selecting one project from one, two or more alternatives. Then usually different ways, uh, and usually, you know, a net present value, right? Uh, which one gives you uh, highest net, uh, Net pre, higher net present value would be the uh, selection criteria among you know a couple of uh, different ways. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, 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 example. So uh, the first and most difficult step in the capital budgeting is re uh, reducing projects to a series of cash flows. Yeah, this part is almost you know. Um, <laughs> Uh, I should say, you know, uh, 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 it must be based on, it should be based on, you know, uh, 
the similar the track record of the uh, uh, similar business but you know um, if you can um, uh, basically generate a forecast right forecast of cash flow uh, it will look like this uh, in year one uh, c0 is the cash flow at time zero right time zero is now right the beginning of the timeline c1 is the end of the year one or period one uh, beginning of year uh, end of time zero and beginning of time one c2 is of course uh, end of time one and beginning uh, of time two and so on. So C1, C2, C3. So our cash flow at time zero is negative. Cash flow at time one is also negative. What does that mean? Uh, that's cash outflow. Isn't that right? Because you have to make investment. So that's basically initial investment. In year one at the beginning at time zero, $50,000, investment of $50,000 is required. So that's cash outflow. Why? That's why it is negative. Also, in at the beginning of year uh, one, at the beginning of year one, uh, investment of um, 10,000 is required. These numbers would be in reality, most of the these numbers will be in thousands. So it'd be like 50 million, 10 million. And from year two, uh, it will generate, right? From year two, it will generate um, positive cash flow or cash inflow. Uh, 15K, 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 right? So this is actually at the end of year one. Make sense? This one, uh, C2, is the cash flow at the end of year one, which is the beginning of year two, right? Um, and we need to, uh, basically, these cash flows will be in the future. These are the cash flows that will be in the future. So we need to uh, discount them to present. So we need a discount rate. That discount rate is called cost of capital. Okay, cost of capital. Uh, literally, you know, it's the cost of uh, raising that capital, right? In other words, and the capital, uh, there are only two types of capital components, two types of capital. Anybody, does anybody remember? Two types of capital. There can be no other type of capital, two types of capital. What is that? What are those two types? Debt and, and equity? Yes, debt and equity. And who was that? Anna. Anna. Okay, Anna. Uh, good. Yeah. Yes, of course. So, um, uh, Anna, you got uh, uh, 0 0.25. Um, okay, Anna. Yeah, and then think about it. Debt and equity, they have uh, uh, different discount rates. Debt is discounted by uh, the yield to maturity. Debt is discounted by the yield, yield to maturity, right? Uh, there is a, I mean, yield means basically return, right? But the return, um, uh, uh, the return cannot be the same for debt and equity. I mean, debt is uh, much less risky and equity is risky way riskier than the debt so uh, obviously uh, the required return uh, the discount rate for equity uh, is different from the, uh, uh, the discount rate uh, for debt right makes sense that will be a huge difference so uh, we will need to uh, uh, basically uh, 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 separate, we will need to distinguish later between uh, uh, cost of debt and cost of, uh, cost of equity. But for now, let's just say uh, cost of capital. Okay. Uh, 
So um, there are uh, roughly four capital budgeting techniques. Uh, one is you know, payback ratio. The other one is uh, net present value, uh, internal rate of return, and profitability index. Mostly, we use net present value and internal rate of return. Payback is kind of rudimentary. It's quite rudimentary. Simply how many years to recover its initial cost. And so there is no um, uh, consideration for present value. It's not, um, if you invested uh, at time zero, if you invested in over $10 million, um, how many years will it take to recover just $10 million? But think about it. When, uh, if it takes five years to recover 10 million, that's, that's actually a stupid thing. Why? Because five years later, 10 million at time zero, uh, whatever cash flow is at, uh, at the end of year one, year two, year three, year four, year five, it must be, uh, it must be put on equal footing with the uh, $10,000 at time zero. So you cannot compare, let's say, uh, 20,000, 20,000, 20,000, 20,000 over the next uh, five years. You, uh, tw five of them will be 10, uh, uh, five of them will be 100,000. You cannot equate $100,000 uh, just like that with today's $100,000. You all know that because uh, it's the money, the cash flow is in the future and you cannot compare it in their face value. You'll have to discount it to present, right? And then only if the present value of all those future cash flows are greater than uh, initial investment, that means positive net cash flow, then the project is accepted, right? That all right, um, we already, you know, uh, it's 12.14, so um, uh, uh, we're out of time. So we're going to continue uh, uh, from here. Uh, next, uh, next Saturday, okay? All righty, we got to call it a day. So um, any questions so far? Any questions? Any questions? Hmm? No, not for today. Thank you. Okay, all righty. All righty. I, I think I said to you are speaking for everyone. <laughs> yeah. You must be speaking for everybody. So, okay, uh, have a great weekend. Same to you. Thank you. All righty, and take care, and I'll see you guys. Enjoy your weekend. Okay. All right, you too. Breath, huh? All right, take care, Janet. All righty, I'll, uh, let me stop sharing. Uh, and stop weekend. recording and sign out. Take care, everyone. Uh...